Hi, I'm going to show you how we can verify correctness of programs uh, using formal verification. What you're seeing is an exercise given from Microsoft website. They are asking us to, to answer some questions. So let's read this question together. First of all, the function itself is extremely simple, right? A couple of lines code, a while loop, and that's all. Oftentimes in practice, mistakes happen in small portion of code. Just maybe because people think there is less chance of making mistakes uh, in small code. Nevertheless, it's interesting to, to verify small code more uh, systematically. So what they're asking is to, to prove whether this program correctly adds up to a given number n, okay? So uh, this is a syntax uh, specific to Daphne language. Okay, the code itself is not uh, in a regular programming language, if you will, but it's it's very similar to, to, to C, Java, whatnot, right? Have a while loop and then it, it, it does some computations on that. But at the first look, it looks like the program will ensure that ensure is a keyword in this in this Daphne system, that R is equal to N, right? The return value is same as N because you see here, uh, the loop goes through it until N is reached and then, uh, uh, at line number 17, R is equal to I is returned, which is which means R is N. But let's see what happens when you just run the verification system. Okay, this verification system is going to show something. Oh, it says a post condition might not hold on this return path. Okay, and then it says this is the post condition that might not hold. So line number 10. Okay, so you see here this little uh, symbol here, and also a red, red mark here. So something is, is is not okay. Today I'm just going to fix this. A problem and uh, get this verified formally. So all I'm going to do is basically my my gut feeling says we need a requires condition saying that the input n better be greater than or equal to zero, right? If that's the case, our um, loop let's say n is uh, uh, zero. In that case, zero is equal to zero is uh, um, zero. I is zero, right? Zero less than zero is false. But then we directly go to line number eighteen where r is equal to zero, which is exactly what the program is supposed to do. So Negative number, when n is negative number, um, we will not even go inside because this is a requires contract, okay? So now let's see what happens, okay? Um, a post condition might not hold on this return path. This is okay, so we still have to, to do some more work. It's usually the case that whenever you have a loop, uh, you need to introduce loop invariance, okay? Which is the fundamental computer science concept um, in, in programming. So I'm going to introduce a loop invariant. So in this case, the loop invariant is an abstraction of the loop. So we can see that the loop invariant is basically what is the property the loop is, is satisfying every time the loop runs. So what, why did I say i less than or equal to n? Well, when, at the beginning, i is zero, right? Right, i is zero. At the end, i becomes n. So uh, when i is zero, zero less than or equal to n is, is true because our assumption here is n is equal to zero. So at the beginning, we are satisfied. At the end of the loop, I becomes n, which is which is perfectly fine because we said I less than or equal to n. Therefore, this should be the invariant. Invariant is a property that's true when the program is running, in, in, when the loop is running, before and after the loop, okay? And during the execution of the loop. So program verified successfully zero errors. That means there are no functional errors in this code, okay? This code will count successfully until it reaches the value n we can be sure that r is equal to n that's what basically we are verifying for all possible uh, integer n this is true okay this is pretty neat to, to be mechanically able to verify as soon as you specify formalism like this okay so uh, let's look into something more interesting uh, you know recursive functions okay so I, I already wrote this thing earlier so it's showing up here so we'll remove this um, it was an exercise i didn't clear up my cache so we can remove this thing, right? So what, what's happening here is uh, they are multiplying two numbers, x and y, using recursion. As you can see here, when one of the numbers x is zero, of course, the return value is zero, that's, that's perfectly fine. Otherwise, they, they do x minus one um, y multiplication and then add x to it. So let me clarify why that's a problem. So um, we do know that x times y is nothing but, um, what is x times y is nothing but, x minus one times y plus y, right? So we can we can call recursion for this particular portion of multiplication and then add it to y. But but here they add it by x, so that's a mistake. So we need to fix that mistake. So let me fix that mistake first. So we go here and we put it like this. Let's see what happens now. Okay, so program verif one verified zero errors. So that means the program worked perfectly. Um, 
we, we, we can be sure that when the program terminates, um, R is equal to X times Y, okay? That's pretty neat. We are doing um, for functional verification. We, we are not focusing so much on the modular integer arithmetic properties and so on at this moment, okay? Um, because the, as you know, it, it, things become different when you consider modular arithmetic. Okay, so this is neat. And uh, let's look at other, one more example and then we'll wrap it up, yeah. So this is pretty neat. He, here, the program is trying to identify this, the maximum number in a given array A and also perform the sum of uh, all the elements of the array. So as you can see here, there's a loop invariant. Uh, the loop invariant is needed here because we are trying to give uh, uh, an abstract statement about what did we expect the loop to do. At each state of the loop, what did we achieve so far? We computed so far uh, the sum of uh, um, the first i minus one numbers, right? And obviously that sum is less than or equal to i times max because each element is less than or equal to max. Therefore, the sum has to be less than or equal to i times max. That's a perfect uh, invariant. And uh, now we can actually run it and ensure that when the program terminates, our sum is less than or equal to n times max, okay? So let's try this. Okay, there are some warnings, but um, you, you got the idea that it's verified, two, uh, two verification conditions are verified, zero errors. Okay, so that's basically it. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.